time for the segment you all look forward to every week and that's of course the jack of all trades um, before we get started my lawyers advised me that I should read a disclaimer and the disclaimer is that the views of the jackal do not necessarily represent basically anyone with a conscience uh, that's basically what we're trying to say um, this is going to be very very bad but let's start off on a light note uh, Mikey Meyer mentioned in his email um, that the playoffs are going on the baseball playoffs are going on uh, there's two series that are 2-0 and already. Yankees lead the Twins 2-0, and the Rangers uh, lead the Rays 2-0. Um, Bob, the Rays or the Twins, do either of them have a chance to make it back? Um, I think the Twins still. Mm -hmm. uh, Yankees are still on them. The Yankees, bitch, are the Twins. <laughs> it's that simple. You know, um, the Twins just can't do it. You know, they don't have enough power. You know, you want to say Jim Tomey with his home run. Yeah, that's all nice. He had like 25 home runs. Jim told me he's not, he just can't do it. You gotta get other people to do it. And then with uh, the Rays, I think they have a chance to come back if any of those teams. The Rays, they can steal bases, they hit for power, they hit for good average, uh, hits, doubles, triples. They do great defense, and I think they can do it. And with the power pitching, I think they can do it. And the bullpen's pretty good. And then, of course, the other two series have been marked by just tremendous pitching um, performances, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but Phillies lead the Reds 1-0. They're playing uh, right now, but we don't know how it's going to end. You probably already know. Um, and then the Giants lead the Braves 1-0. Um, behind Tim Lutz comes also awesome start. So, based on that, do you think the, the Phillies domination, and the, uh, the Giants pitching domination will continue, or do you think the offenses of the Braves and the Reds have a chance to come back and make it a series? Um, if i got to pick one of those teams... Uh, Rays, I, I mean, the Reds can't come back with their offense. They do have a pretty good offense all around. The pitching's not that bad. The Braves, they do not have enough offense at all. It's a bunch of little King Garden girls out there. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, Tim Miskir, the Giants' pitchers is too good. Tim Miskir made his major league uh, debut in the playoff with 14 Ks. That's a record. And um, he's just too good. Him, Matt Cain, Sanchez. It's too good. Thank God Barry Zero is not on the roster. <laughs> he would fuck up the whole thing, you know. Right. But um, it's good. You know, the Giants have too much pitching. Now, you like Tim Lincecum's pitching. Roy Holiday, do you think that was the no-hitter? It was impressive. As, as impressive as Lincecum or no? More impressive? Um, yes, I do think it's more impressive. Braves' hitting staff is too bad. The Reds have a good hitting staff. They should not have been shut out like that with no-hitter. If I was the Reds, I would be embarrassed. The Braves... How can you be embarrassed if you have a shit hand and stuff? You know? <laughs> I'm sorry, Bobby Cox. I love you. It's your last year. But sorry. You might as well just be dead because you're not going to win a World Series. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And um, let's switch gears. Let's talk a little bit about football. All this week on Sunday, you saw everyone um, wearing pink. Um, we're decked out in pink today for Breast Cancer Awareness. Basically, pink everywhere. It's all for a good cause, though. It's for Breast Cancer Awareness. Do you think it's too much pink? Do you think it's starting to get redundant? Because eventually we're going to see a team with a uh, pink uniform, most likely, play on uh, during October. So, do you feel it's like it's too much pink or no? It's for a good cause. Let them do it. I think it's almost done. If you were a team just with pink uniforms, then go for it, man. I like that. You know, I'm all you, for you that. You like pink uniforms? I like pink uniforms. I'm not afraid to say that right now. The Jackal likes pink uniforms. But, all this pink stuff and the breast people, the people at breast cancer coming on the field and everything, they're going to die anyway. It's going to come back. They're going to die. I'm sorry. They will. All right. I, I don't have breast cancer. Do you have breast cancer? No. Do you, aunt, aunt? No. Do you, Brian? No. So, you know what? This is all we're doing. It. The pink wristbands, the pink dots every year for baseball and football. Boo-hoo. I'm sorry, but I'm not enjoying it. I officially apologize on behalf of <laughs> <laughs> this is what the jackal's all about. I uh, denounce and reject my own brother and anything he says from this point forward. Um, unbelievable, he just said that. But that's fine. It's fine. That's what the jackal is. That's who he is. Let's move on. Uh, again, we'll do Jets Giants picks every single week un until football ends. We'll do this. I was dead wrong about the Giants last week. Uh, he's been reminding me every day since. So a, a repeat performance this week for the Giants against a good, really good Texans team. Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, Andre Johnson, though, he doesn't mess up, uh, 
you know, ankle. So uh, that's going to hurt them a little bit for Houston. Help us for the Giants fans. Our defense, you know what? They need to just, you know, who cares about penalties? You get penalties, that's fine. You know what? You put your team together and you just beat the shit out of the other team. Just for clarification, every single time the Jets get a, a penalty, he says dirty players, Eric Smith hits a guy, he says he should be suspended, um, but his team does it, it's perfectly okay. Um, that's basically like Republican in politics. That's Bob with uh, with football. No, this is why I want. Giants <laughs> have a good defense, they can beat Houston. Houston, know what, you beat the Colts, big deal. Whatever. Fine. Uh, and the Jets, they're going to play against the Minnesota Vikings. Um, we'll have a little bit more on this in the next question uh, with the Randy Moss situation. Don't talk about Randy Moss yet. I'll save it for a minute. Uh, but can can Minnesota come into the Meadowlands and beat the Jets? Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. think so? They have absolutely zero chance of beating the Jets. Uh, I think mean, that's wrong. The Vikings, they have a good running game. They have a, a quarterback who, you know, Send pictures of his penis to women, <laughs> but no way. When he's on that field, he's paying attention. His, you know, his wife is in the, you know, booth of cancer and all that and everything like that. You know, too bad he's not, you know, thinking of her. You know, but you know what? They have a great running game, good enough defense to make it, and um, I think they can beat the Jets. You know, and uh, Mike Meyer and his email again. We're gonna keep going back to that. Hey, he sent an email. You didn't. You want us to talk about your thing? Send us an email. Um, he suggested we each do an upset pick of the week. I think that's a tremendous idea. Oh, he's going to be upset what I'm saying from this show. Probably. Um, <laughs> well, who's your upset pick of the week? Um, Chiefs versus the Colts. I think the Chiefs. They're 5-0. and oh, Or 4-0, and oh, whatever they are. I, I believe it's 3-0, oh, I think. 3-0. Oh, and they were on a bye. You know, that's okay, shoot. But um, <laughs> the Chiefs, you know what? I, the defense is not that good. But know what they got? They got two black players running the ball. And that's the way you got to do it. And against the Colts, their defense is not, they don't have much depth. Bob Sanders is out again. He got a boo-boo. He's out for the season. So, you know what they do? Run the ball on their defense. Don't give up on it. Just keep running, 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 and you'll beat the Colts. We're going to get a, a hate email from the American Cancer Society, the NAACP. Who else, Bob? Who else you want to throw under the bus there? But, uh, I love gays, though. So you know. Well, at least he loves gays. So that's good. Um, I have the Cleveland Browns upsetting um, the Atlanta Falcons. I, I, they're in Cleveland. Peyton Hills looks really good. And I don't think the Falcons are that good. So um, I somewhat agree with you, but I think the Chiefs against the Colts would be more of a big upset. And I think Chiefs have a chance to do it. All right, and let's talk about my second least favorite thing behind the Tea Party, and that's Randy Moss. Um, he got traded for a third-round pick to Minnesota. Uh, does he have any impact whatsoever this Monday? He's going to have an impact, even though he doesn't catch a ball. It's going to be an impact. You're going to double team him. You know, people's going to wonder, is Revis going to cover him or not? You know what? Randy Moss is a good player. The one thing he's got against him, he doesn't have against him, I'm sorry, is that he's black, he's tall, and he's an athlete. That's all you, you know, you go that in football, you're, you're going places. And now with Brett Favre, even though he's old, Brett Favre, his receivers drop passes. Now he has Randy Morris, he's going to get open receivers, and Peterson's numbers probably going to go up too. I'm sorry, Jets. Boo, boo, hoo. You're losing. He would have an impact except Darrell Reeves is back, and uh, that means nobody has an impact when they play, when they play against uh, the well, Jets. Well, maybe he's going to sit out because, you know, maybe he's upset about, you know, the, the plays or something <laughs> like that. Uh, before we go, there's two things I want to mention. One, I'm really sorry about all the cancer stuff. As you notice, I'm wearing my uh, Save the Tatas bracelet. If you're wearing this, I know a lot of young people watch the show. If you're wearing this, please don't wear these in school. I know it's no, for no, a good no, cause. No no, no. no, no, I know it's for a good cause, but you're going to get in trouble. You wear, you wear them in school. You can't. <laughs> you, you're, you're the one saying, I'm an asshole for making fun of breast cancer. And now you're saying, don't wear these wristbands. You're the asshole. Just truth. tell your principal. You are. Just tell your principal the jackal said it was okay. And the other thing is if you, if you want to fight against idiots like this and you want to help cancer, go to cancer.org. Slash strides online. My good friend Laura works for the American Cancer Society. Laura, woo! Maybe towards the end of the month we'll have her on, um, but she directed Ooh. you there. I might get a little beaten for this then. She directed, uh, told us to direct you there, and we'll put up a, a link um, right after this. So when we come back, I, I'm, I'm already mad at him. I'm gonna get more pissed off. Uh, so come on back. We'll be right back.
Earlier this week in Tennessee, the Cranick family house burnt to the ground. The county politicians there, following the lead of National Tea Party Republicans, privatized the fire department. What that means is that every single citizen paid $75. If you paid the money and your house catches on fire, the fire department comes and puts it out. But if you didn't, like the Cranick family, for whatever reason, they watch it burn to the ground, literally, as took place this week. If you hear Tea Party or hear Republicans around the country saying, let's privatize things, let's cut taxes, let's save people money, go ahead, it sounds good. But this was a demonstration of that policy in action. That's not a country I want to live in. Not a country where people that have every means to put out the fire and don't. They just refuse because they couldn't pay $75. They were too poor to have a home. They were too poor to have a home. People call me naive because I'm a liberal. I'm not naive enough to know when the right thing, what to do, when to do the right thing, and when to do the wrong thing. The wrong thing is to, to watch people's houses burn. The wrong thing is to turn away sick people because they're too poor for health care. The wrong thing is to tell people, take your money and put it in the stock market, even if you don't know nothing about the stock market. And if it crashes, too damn bad. You should have been smarter. I'm tired. I'm tired of people like Glenn Beck, Glenn Beck, who know nothing about being poor, who sit in, in studios or in Washington with their rich friends. They don't understand that sometimes people make tough choices. Sometimes people have to decide to pay this bill, and they pay that bill. And then they want to cut taxes for the rich. They want to give rich people more money, and if you're poor, too bad, your house burns, you die. You have to take your money and decide what to do with it. For God's sake, if you're going to vote for a Republican this November, Go ahead. I dare you to. But if you think they're representing you, you're absolutely insane. They watched a house burn to the ground because they wanted to. Because they wanted to prove to everyone else that this policy works. And if you don't pay your $75, you're going to be next. God damn it, pick up a hose. Put the fucking fire out. I'm tired of people that have no idea what it's like to live in tough situations, to make tough decisions, making us, forcing us to make tough decisions every day. That's all I got. What are you doing? Should I go see about breast cancer? And I don't. <laughs> cancer dot, cancer dot org, uh, slash strides. Make a difference. Don't be Republican. We'll see you next week.